So we have a file called glm.r in uh, the lecture code subdirectory. In this file, um, there's a bunch of different analyses. Um, we're just going to look at the very first one in this video. This is the analysis of the 2003 NFL field goal data. Um, there's more analyses in here. There's a data set about shark attacks um, that we model with the Poisson distribution. Um, there's a data set about precipitation in Seattle that we model with a gamma distribution. And there's a little bit of information about the gamma distribution. And is that it? And there's um, analysis, a new analysis of the battery data um, using, I believe, uh, gamma distribution again. Uh, for the precipitation data, there's also an analysis where we take a square root transformation, uh, just so you can see how those two analyses differ. So here we're just going to look at the field goal data. So let's read in the data and take a look at it. Uh, there's lots of observations. So we're almost to the top. Okay. So each row in this data set is a single field goal attempt. So if we look at this first row, this represents a field goal attempt from 30 yards. And it was a success. And it occurred in week one of the NFL season. Uh, let's go to this one. So this is an attempt at 55 yards. Uh, the success column is zero, which means it was a failure. It did not go through the goal. And it also occurred in week one. So that's the structure of the data. If I do attach field goal, now uh, these variables are available. So um, yards is the yards column and week is the weeks column. So let's attempt to plot the data. So I'm going to put yards on the horizontal axis and because that's going to be our predictor variable. The success or failure is going to be the response. To make the plot look a little nicer, I'm adding a little bit of um, vertical noise because all of the points are going to be either 0 or 1. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so that's one representation for our data. Um, I don't love that plot, but you can kind of see some of the features. So if yards is small, like around 20 yards, almost all of the attempts are successes. There's only two failures here. If the yards are very long, so if you're far away from the goal, um, there's very much fewer attempts, but um, they're all failures here. Um, so let's try a little bit different um, visualization of these data. What I'm going to do in this visualization is aggregate the data to um, each yard value. So yard vec accomplishes that. So yard vec, these are all the individual um, yardages eight, from 18 yards, which was the shortest attempt, up to 62 yards, which was the longest. What I'm going to calculate here is for each yardage, 18, 19, 20, so on and so forth, I'm going to count the number of successes, and I'm going to count the number of attempts, which is an n total. So I'm going to loop over this, and I'm going to count number of successes for the jth yardage as the sum of the number of times you attempted here and when it was a success. So this is the number of successes at that specific yardage. And the total is just the number of times you're at that yardage. So if I calculate that, I can calculate the success rate as the number of successes over the number total. And I'm going to put these in a matrix just to show you what we calculated. So um, at 18 yards, we had one success and one attempt, so on a success rate of one. At, let's do 30 yards, we had 19 successes out of 22 attempts, 
So that's an 86.3% success rate. So now if we use these the data in this form, we can get a little bit nicer plot. So let's plot this. So now the horizontal axis is still yards, but we've aggregated the data um, to each specific integer yardage. So now you can see the pattern in the data that these are almost all successes. And then as you increase the yardage, the success rate goes down. Um, so what's going on here is that um, there was probably only one or two attempts at this specific yardage, and they just happened to be successes. Um, so this doesn't follow the general pattern, but the reason is that there are just very few attempts, um, and they just happen to be successes. So I think a better plot would be to change the size of the plotting symbol to represent the number of successes. So that's what we do in the next plot. Uh, we still have yard vec on the horizontal, success rate on the vertical. Uh, we have the same limits here, but we're going to change the size of the plotting symbol to be the square root of the total number of attempts and divide it by two so we get a nice scaling. The reason we use square root is we, because we want the area of the circle to be proportional to the number of attempts. So let's do that. And now you can kind of see what's going on. We had um, just one attempt at 18 yards. It was a success. There's lots of attempts at these kind of middle yardages and then fewer attempts at these uh, higher yardages. And here now we can see that it's not a particularly, it shouldn't be really influence our um, assessment of the probability at this specific yardage because there was only one attempt at each of these two. All right, so that's visualization. What I want to do next is try to fit some models. So the basic thing that we want to do is figure out what's the relationship between the success rate and the yardage, the yards away from the goal. All right, so the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a binomial response, and I'm going to use the data in this form where we've aggregated to specific yardages. So the way, so each um, row of the data set, so let me show you the data set again. Each row of the data set is going to be, um, have a yardage, a number of successes and a number of totals. So let's see, for example, let's do 30 yards. So the response is going to be the number of successes, but we need a way to tell R what the number of attempts was. If we just gave the number of successes, that wouldn't give all the information. It makes a difference um, that you had 22 attempts rather than 42 attempts at 30 yards. So we have to tell the GLM function that uh, the number of successes and the total in some way. The way uh, GLM wants it is they want a matrix where the first column is the number of successes and the second column is the number of failures. So the number of failures is just the total minus the number of successes. And then otherwise, this works just like the LM function uh, where we put the variables we want to be used as covariates. But for GLM, we have to specify again uh, these other two parts. So the other parts are what are the distribution? We're going to pick binomial. So binomial is a natural distribution to use uh, when your data consists of um, successes uh, in a number of trials. And we're going to use the logistic uh, link function. And um, in R, that's represented by uh, logit is the, the term for it. So this will fit the generalized linear model, binomial response, success probability um, is related to the logistic function of a linear function of the number of the yards. So that fits the model. Summary works just the same as with LM fits. Uh, we'll get a nice table here that has coefficients. So these coefficients are, if you think back to the uh, theoretical lecture, uh, this one is B0. 
and this one is B1. All right, so how do we interpret these things? So B0 uh, is 5.69. I think kind of the simplest way to interpret this is just calculate the success probability uh, when x1 is 0. That's just equal to uh, e to the b0 over 1 plus e to the b0. That's how you calculate that. So our model is telling us that if you had a field goal attempt from 0 yards, your probability of kicking it in the field goal is 99.6%. Now if you know anything about football, this kind of doesn't make sense. Uh, they would never attempt a field goal from zero yards, which would be like directly under the field goal. Um, probably your success probability is close to zero. I don't know how you would kick it in the goal from directly underneath it. Maybe if it's windy, that would work. Um, so this on its own isn't really all that interpretable because we never attempt a field goal from zero yards. Now B1 uh, does have an interpretation. This is the um, amount by which the odds... Uh, change when you increase the distance by one yard. So the odds are going down as you increase the yardage, which is like saying that the probabilities go down. So the odds go down linearly um, by an amount equal to minus 0 0.109, um, which means that the probabilities themselves go down as well. All right, so the best way to visualize that is to just make a plot. So the first part of the plot is the same as before. We're just setting that up um, to have the data in it. Um, the next part of the plot, I'm going to use yardvec. And then so yardvec, remember, is 18 to 62. And I'm just going to pull out the fitted values, which are the uh, estimated probabilities for those values. And I'm going to put a line there. So the line, uh, this tells us the estimated probability under our generalized linear model for all of these different yardages. And this is a nice fit here. What it, one thing that's really nice about this fit is it doesn't try to go crazy and fit to these points up here. The generalized linear model knows that there was just one attempt at each of these two yardages, so it shouldn't pay too close attention to what's going on here. Really, it's trying to fit the bulk of the, the data which are in, in this range here. Um, what I plotted, printed out here, are, these are the success probabilities for a bunch of different yardages. So, um, like I said, it wasn't really useful to try to interpret the success probability at zero yards, but we could look at something like 30 yards. Now, this is interpretable. This says that uh, field goal kickers in 2003 have an estimated 91.7% success rate at 30 yards. Okay, now um, to fit these binomial models, uh, we use this form where we aggregated data to each of the yardages and modeled the response as binomial with the number of um, attempts we can also uh, put this model in, in the original form that the data came in. So let's look at the documentation to see real quick how this works. Mm -hmm. Down here. So for binomial, and there's another family called quasi-binomial, uh, the response can be specified as a factor. The first level denotes failure and all others are success, or as a two column matrix with the columns giving the number of successes and failures. So we, in the first time we fit the model, we use the second form, a two column matrix with the columns giving number of successes and failures. You can also do it in this other form uh, where we specify the response as a factor, or you can actually do it as um, zeros and ones, where zero is a failure and and one is a success. So we're going to refit the model in that form. So remember that success was this big long vector of about 950 um, attempts. And each attempt is either a 0 or a 1. 
and the yards vector is has the same length and it's the specific yardage for that specific attempt. So we can also fit the model this way and you see we get the exact same coefficients. So this is just two equivalent ways of fitting the same model. Now the reason for doing that in this case is I want to fit another model where we include uh, the weak as an additional covariate. Now if you think about that, if we look at the data, uh, let's look at some more field goal. Oh, those are all the first week. If we look at the first hundred. Um, we see the data organized by first week and then second week. Now, if we want to include week as a variable in the model, uh, we have to put the data in this form um, because at each specific yardage, if we aggregate the data to yardage, that's going to consist of field goals at, at several different weeks. So it wouldn't be possible to analyze the data with a week variable uh, when you aggregate to yardages. So we have to um, do the data in this form, but that's no problem for the GLM function. Um, if we fit this model, so this has both yards and week in the model, um, we can see that the effect of yards, again, is negative. So, um, and this is an additive model. So th what this means is after controlling for week, the effect of increasing the, the yardage is to decrease the log odds by 0 0.11 per yard. And then af while holding yardage constant, the effect of increasing the week is to decrease the log odds by minus 0 0.05. So the effect of week is negative. So later weeks have lower field goal percentages. Um, now, why is that true? Uh, I think this actually makes a lot of sense, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. Um, so I want you to think through, if you know something about NFL football, um, then this will make sense to you, but you have to do a little bit of thinking for, for why this is the case. And I think I know the answer, so I can um, talk about that in the office hour. But I, I want to let you think about that. Um, we can push this further. So like I said, when you do a generalized linear model, you can do all the things that you do uh, with a normal model in terms of factors and interactions and so on and so forth. So we can try to have an interaction between yards and week. Um, that's no problem for the GLM. Um, and this will have the same interpretation. So what this means is that the effect of yardage depends on the week and vice versa. Uh, as you can see, though, the... Um, coefficient is very small and it's not significant. Um, so we don't have evidence of an interaction in this case. So I think probably we'll just stick with the additive model in yards and week. And then this big complicated piece of code, um, this is uh, plotting the fitted model. So I won't go through every single step. You can go through that on your own. But what I will say is the first part just sets up the data and what this does is it calculates um, the fitted values for a specific choice of weeks. Uh, this is for the first week. This one's for, and adds the line. This is for the fifth week, adds the line. Oops. Let's try that again. This is for the fifth week, this is for the 10th week, and this is for the 16th week. Let's see. Something went wrong. Let me rerun all the code. There we go. So this is the black lines the first week, the magenta lines five, blue lines 10, and green line is 16. So you can see what's going on here. The success probabilities are decreasing as you increase the week. So like I said, that makes a lot of sense um, if you think about what's going on in the NFL season. Uh, but I'll leave that for you to think about. Okay, so that is binomial 
and um, Bernoulli responses and generalized linear models.